so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, how did you get into the whole photography? I mean, not for the, it's videography, yeah, well, sorry. Well, I mean, that's like... There's a little bit of both, no? I saw, or totally maybe both. just Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they kind of go hand in hand, but, like, the minute you have a camera, people are just, like, right. think that you're a photographer, right. which is fine. But in the beginning, I took a lot of photos, but, um, anyways, I... Well, it's hard to talk about without, like, going all the way back to the beginning, but... Oh, so, I... Uh, I graduated from college... And I had no idea what the fuck I was going to do. Yeah. And I... <laughs> like, it's, so, it's such like a weird story. But um, my brother had passed away. And I was like, just in kind of a weird space. And my friend was like, hey, you should come to Haiti. Because she okay. worked there. And she worked at a malnutrition center. And she was like, you should just come to Haiti. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to... Uh, bring a camera right so um, somebody like sponsored me and bought me just a little camera so I could do in my head I was just gonna do kind of like a little documentary thing about being there and stuff yeah and anyway so while I was there I filmed a couple videos I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing but I just like edited on freaking iMovie and I just put some stuff together and I put it out there into the interwebs and people were like oh my gosh it's so cool and then some chick was like you should do my wedding and I was like what like people do that <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was a thing that people videoed weddings and so I was like yeah sure and that wasn't for like another six months and so of course I wanted to like prep for it right so I ended up doing a couple before hers and then it just like snowballed into me freaking being a wedding video <laughs> okay. how, how old were you when you did this the, the um, Haiti trip and all that I was 20 Oh gosh, 24. 24? 24, 23, 24. I feel like I'm so old now, I can't remember. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's crazy. That's, I mean, because that's a big jump to be like, I mean, essentially fresh out of college and be like, yo, I'm gone. But oh, at the same God, time, yeah. That's also the the age where you're like, totally. You don't care. You know what? Yeah, and you're just I'm like gone. down. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Uh, for some reason, I had, like, the gumption to bring a camera there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's because I knew that I knew that I would get way more more out of it than, you know, than what I could ever do for, you know, the, the um, place I was going to go work for and help. Right. I knew that I was going to get way more out of it than, you know, because that's, like, a life-changing experience for anybody. I, and I probably wouldn't have had the balls to do it if I hadn't just been through, like, you know, something shitty, so. Right. I don't know, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about now, because I I think, now I'm older, and so I'm like, I can't believe I did that to my mom and to, <laughs> like, this boy. And how, how recent was that, of, like, your brother to that you was, going to Haiti? That was, oh gosh, it was, like, a, maybe, like, maybe, maybe a year. Oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah so it was, like, I had to, like, I had to go back and just finish my senior show. And then I graduated, and it was just like, oh, life. Right. <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I always knew, I never knew what I was going to do, but I always knew I wasn't going to work for anybody yeah. else. That's crazy. I don't right? know. I don't know. I just, I never saw myself, like, I don't know, working what, for somebody. Was that, like, you think is it your parents? Did they work for anybody or not um, or on their own? Maybe. I mean, my dad, so my dad's a wheat farmer. So obviously he's been self-employed his whole life, but then my mom, you know, she was a chef and a cook for ever. So I think it's more just the inherent nature. Like I'm a lot, I'm a lot like my dad. Oh, that's cool. I feel like usually that comes from someone. You know, like, totally. When you, totally. Grow, when you watch your parents, like yeah, and you're like, oh, they do. it's possible, you know. It's, yeah. You don't need so you already had this vision of like I'm gonna, you know, just do something on my own and not work for anybody. Yeah. For um, some reason, I felt. I just never saw myself working for somebody else. And you have that, like, spirit, you know what I mean? Just kind of being around you. You have that very, like, you know, free it's spirit, like, you know what I mean? Crazy? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you just seem very, like, just, you're going to do you. Yeah, you know, you, you, like, I've had a lot, I've had a lot of opportunities, I feel like, mm -hmm. that I, I try not to let them go by without, you know, capitalizing on them. And right. I've been dealt shitty hands, but I've also been held really 
been dealt really good hands, so I don't know. I can't. We just you you get you get what you get, and you either run with it or you don't. You know. No, that's I real. don't know. When you chose the degree in art, mm -hmm. was you know was that a difficult thing to decide on, or you said like not a lot of people really choose that degree essentially? Yeah, I you know? I went to college for basketball. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I got a scholarship for basketball, and so that's why I went. To oh, so school. you're nice. Then. You're good with with the handle. Then. You know, I just uh, like it's <laughs> it's hard to talk because it's like I that's why I went to school. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like I probably wouldn't be a school person if not for playing wow. a sport. You know what I mean? Would I have gone because my parents made me? Yeah, but right. like that's not inherently something I would have been like. Oh, I'm gonna go to school. Right. No. So I went because I was playing sports. Oh, yeah. It was my junior or senior year, and my art uh, instructors made me choose. They said you need to choose basketball or or <laughs> your, oh. your fucking degree. And I was like, oh damn, because you know when you're a college athlete, I mean that's your life. Yeah, and I ended up getting, um, I ended up getting semi injured and so my body basically gave up on me I was like so I finally listened to my body and I I because I could have had another year and I I quit and then I chose my degree because that's what they told me to do and um, you know because that was the only way I could have finished because the, mm. the so your sports, degree is yeah. super demanding um, you know any major is super demanding but an art degree is like really demanding and so they straight up told me man you need to choose so i did um, and what were, was it was it like for videography or how does no, it, an art oh degree gosh, like, no. what, you, what is it i was actually um a fine art sculpture major what? so yeah no. wow so you're just like all kinds of talented i mean i just like to do anything that's like creative or challenging or mm. whatever i mean i don't i think video just for some reason it came, it came about, you know, mm. and so I taught myself how to do it and it was a need, you know, like wedding videography is not, it's a new thing. Right. And like to the, to the capacity that it is now. Right. Cause I, know, I, I still remember like, like that. video, uh, videography of weddings back in the day with like the old handheld and it'd be like mad shaky. Yeah. Like the uncle's holding it. Yeah. <laughs> Which all... is like still totally <laughs> awesome. I'm like, I tell people, I'm like anything, anything is better than nothing. Right. But you know it's just now it's like you can literally have a movie like it's so cool yeah. like, it's not for everybody but but I it just... looks super dope like uh seeing like some of like the shots that you do <clears throat> i didn't get to see like a full wedding one but just some of the stuff you would post on instagram and you could just tell like you know how much goes into it and how like cinematic it looks right. i could only imagine you know for the couple you know how like exciting that has to be you know because imagine like their kids later getting to see that Exactly. versus what we gotta see when it's like exactly. just crazy you know they, and they, just like having something to to watch yeah i mean i just that's all like i have this weird morbid background and so that's why i'm like super intense about it i'm like this is not about you it's about your kids it's about mm -hmm. your legacy it's about your family it's <laughs> about like yeah it's cool that you get to watch it but it's really cool that your kids get to yeah. watch it your grandkids get to watch it like as long as the internet lives like this will live you know? That's why I started the second company was the, so that I could serve more people because I'm just mm. one person. And so I was like, well, why not just train more people to be able to serve more people, you know? So you have like your own like company as far as like shooting, like videography or? Yeah. So I have my company and then, which is Bells of Films. And then I have Coyote Film Co, which is um, like a co-op of uh, basically freelance videographers and editors. Oh, okay. <laughs> How do you decide on who you, do you just... You know, I mean, I guess it's easier through social media now, but yeah. How do you decide? Well, I've had people that second shoot for me, that have second shot for me for years, mm -hmm. um, and so I basically will bring people along to my weddings and kind of see they if do. they have what it takes and like if they love it, if they think mm. it's fun, because that's what's so cool about it is it's, it's a really it, it's a really fun job, but it's also really hard and really stressful I and like imagine. you know, especially a wedding. Yeah. It's, you know that's a that's a big commitment yeah and it's a lot to do like like a of uh, any sort of video i mean you know any yeah. production is like in a normal setting for like a movie that's like a 10 person 
job. Right. But as like a wedding videographer, you're like you're doing all of it. You're editing, you're shooting, you're exactly. doing the business, you're doing the sound, you're doing the, all of it. And it's just like mm. crazy. And so the 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 idea with Coyote is that everybody's just doing what they want mm. when they want. They're not overworked. They're not you know if you just want to go shoot and go home and make money like that's all you're doing you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I'm trying to make it really about freelance. Well, that's super dope. Shooters. Man. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I went through and I saw like you know a bunch of weddings, and I was like, dang, like it's a lot of energy that you're giving, you know, yeah. to these weddings because it's not like you only did two weddings. Like you have a list of weddings, yeah. and there was it seemed like there was even there was some one location. Year I did Thirty. Jeez, like that's <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> I mean it's you know it's a different thing when you just show up and shoot and then you go home, yeah. but you can tell like you're trying to get the best shots for everybody. And that's a lot of energy that you're you're putting in. Like, do you have to space, you know, give yourself time? Totally. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a really <laughs> demanding job. It's also really rewarding. Mm. Um, like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work leading up to this one moment, one moment where you send them the film. Right, And then yeah. it's like you get this epic response. Like, you know what I mean? It's like a drug, honestly. It's like... <laughs> you work your <laughs> ass off and then you send it to them and then like right in a perfect world you get like this amazing response and like they're so happy and you and the thing the cool thing about it is like yeah that's how they feel right now and it's only going to amplify year after year because you know that's a right. memory oh yeah you know for sure and they wouldn't know that any of it happened if not for having the video and then you're giving them a perspective because you know as a human you see it through your lens but then if you have somebody recording it, you're able to capture the way they were reacting to something. Yeah. You know, it's just so well, much seeing that comes it, seeing with your it. wedding day happen through like an artist's eyes yeah. instead of just like, you know, a spectator or whatever. Exactly. Your uncle shooting. Yeah. Which, <laughs> I always and I, go but back like to... I'm so down with that too. Like <laughs> I tell people I I always post on my stories, I'm like, I don't care if you pay cousin Jimmy four dollars <laughs> to iPhone record it. Like, right do it like but I don't care like I don't meet with my couples at all before so it's like a it's like a it's like a I, I'm rushing to figure out like who's grandpa who's grandma like oh, okay. you know who are the yeah. important people where it's like I'm gonna be trying to find like footage of these people when they're gone essentially right. like who's important um, like I don't focus too heavily on the bridal party unless it's like brother or sister like I'm just very intense about um, you know family and things that I think they'll care about later in life maybe they don't know that they care about it right now and they don't think they'll want it right now but i know that they will want it later you know yeah and uh, you do you think that comes from just everything you've been through i think so probably Cause, yeah because that's not something i think you hear too often you know what i mean yeah um you know, usually it's more focused on the the bride and the groom and the pretties and the details yeah and like, you know and yeah. for for that i think that's super cool that you know you're shooting with like an intent of you know they don't even necessarily might not even think of that being important yeah. right now but later they're gonna appreciate it so i think yeah. that's really cool that you know you add that, that yeah. element to it i mean and that's what i think i don't know you you have to interject your own personal your own personal beliefs and stories behind something for it to actually be meaningful and yeah. you know and make sense and i i just feel like that's my job my job is to do what they don't know that they need or what they don't think they need right. in regards to a wedding like to me like when people give toasts at a wedding like when else is somebody gonna literally like fucking write about you and yeah. read it to you and cry like never yeah. especially dads like you know when you have the dads that don't cry and like they are writing about you and crying about like that does not happen <laughs> that's true if all, not only at a wedding it's crazy it's like the shit that should happen all the time only happens at weddings and funerals <laughs> yeah and no, so I'm right. like we better film that shit no, film it true. in high def so you can zoom in on the tears like <laughs> no that's very true though that's true and it's because... weird because i'm like the most unemotional person ever like yeah. and i'm not like sappy and then like i'm a fucking wedding videographer like, <laughs> that's great it's so stupid so got married recently right i or, got married i don't know how recently but in 2017 2017 or 17 yeah okay that's fairly recent yeah so i think we've been married for three um, See, like, I'm not sappy, so I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and did you have to choose somebody to shoot, like, uh, from your team? How was that? I am an being, idiot. On the other hand. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, I, 
I regret, I regret, I have the same regret as everyone else, it's not having a videographer, and I, I, I did have somebody, um, come to do it, but he also had another job, which was DJing, oh, okay. and this was before, like, I had only been in the, ish excuse me, I had only been in the industry for, like, a little bit, so, mm -hmm. like, you know, I didn't really know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't really know, yeah, um, so I regret, I have regrets. Yeah. Um, I had seen that you are like not anti-caffeine, but you're like, Oh my gosh. You removed caffeine. Yeah. It's <laughs> actually really funny that you like picked up on that. I mean, I guess it's not cause I post coffee, coffee pictures like every five seconds, but. <laughs> no, but I think that's interesting. All day today I've been dying for coffee. I haven't had a cup today cause I just been super busy, oh but. Oh my God, are you dying? All day. No, I'm good. <laughs> I think I just go in. I used to work graveyard shift, yeah. so I think that just kicks in, and oh we're just my gosh. going. I I mean I freaking love coffee. Who doesn't? And <laughs> last the years just go by. I don't even know. I think it was like last year. I've been drinking it for a year. So about a year ago, um, I was just having like I was just having like I don't know. I was just having issues. Like I didn't feel yeah. well. Um, so I went to a naturopath and of course they're like, stop drinking coffee and stop drinking and <laughs> yeah. stop doing fun things. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, they're right. But so I was like, well, I can, I was like, I'm not giving up booze. Not that I drink a lot of booze, but like, you know, right. I social, I like to go socially have a drink. Exactly. So I was like, well, I'm not going to give up that, but I can, I can attempt to do caffeine. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that I was able to do it was because I found Ticino, which is, it's basically a tea that tastes close enough to coffee. Okay. So I just mix it with a little bit of coffee. and But the caffeine was making me crazy. And I didn't even know it for so long. Like, really? Yeah, like yeah. in the afternoons, I would be... I, I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was angry and I was... Oh, this is crazy. Really? Yeah. And I, but I had no idea because that's just... That was just... Normal. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I when I cut back... Cause I would just, I would have like a cup, two cups in the morning and then I'd go get like an espresso when I came to town to work or whatever. Yeah. And I had no idea how much it was affecting me. So then when I cut back, I haven't cut it out, but when I cut back, oh, okay. it was crazy. Cause I, I cut back and then I had some and I just like, now whenever I, like if I have espresso, when I do, cause like yeah. I fucking love espresso, but when I do, it's like, I pay for it. Cause I'm just like. Oh, I'm just almost. like on edge and like stressed out. <clears throat> like I'm just a stressed out person in general, mm, but okay. that just made me like crazy stressed. Really? Yeah. So I, I like tell everybody, I'm like, are you stressed out? <laughs> like, <laughs> are you angry? <laughs> you got back. Oh, <laughs> that, that, so what's your? Because I saw there was two types. It was uh, what did you say the? So this the the ticino. Ticino. I couldn't pronounce that. I was, the ticino is a, It's technically a tea. Okay. And then the Four Sigmatic. There we go. Four Sigmatic. See, that one actually does have coffee. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so that one's more just a mushroom. Oh, okay. Mushroom. I don't know I guess, if you've heard about Yeah, like, I've, uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, 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 Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe Rogan, I've, I've heard him talk about it. Yeah. Um, and uh, my wife does them all the time. She'll make them all the time. Yeah. There's mud water yeah, yeah, yeah. and all this. And she's been trying to put me on. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, and they have And <laughs> they have ones that don't have coffee, but like that specific one that I that I bought it's it's coffee and mushroom oh okay okay um but like there's Ticino that has mushroom in it too I'm just all about that I love like I just love health shit and and yeah but no yeah I saw that shift you know what was it because of that same thing where you had to go to the to the doctor or was it just on your own I mean I think I just started to feel like shit and I don't I don't remember when but so I went to this naturopath and my mom recently passed away of cancer oh, God. and it was colon cancer and she was young so basically the gal was like well if you basically like it's not a matter of if but when if you continue down the path of like not taking care of yourself and I was like Jeez. you know like sometimes you just need somebody smarter than you to like right. tell you what's <laughs> right right yeah, honestly yeah and so and like so I have the colon cancer on both sides my mom's side and my dad's side. Damn. And I was like, shit. So I was just like, all right, it's time to get your act together. And mm -hmm. At least like move your body and cut the caffeine and like maybe one glass of wine and say, <laughs> say <laughs> Right, right. I thought wine is like supposed to be somewhat healthy. Okay, it's good for your heart, but maybe not your colon. Not too much. Know. So they're okay. Yeah, and homegirl was like, no alcohol. And I was like, well, we're opening a brewery, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> right. Sorry, like, right. Oh, 
you don't mind, how long ago did your mom pass? Uh, uh, she passed away last December. Oh, God. Yeah, that's really freshy. It's oh, fresh. shit. So obviously, it changes you in the sense of health. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, in every way. Yeah. In every way. And like I said, when I was in college, I lost my brother. And, you know, that was really shitty and really, really hard. He was, like, almost a year older than me. But then losing your mom is, like... So shit. So it's just a lot of <laughs> losing people. No, that's tough. I mean, yeah, that's never, never easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and I think I, I'm, I'm a lot like my dad, which he's very just like, you know, the show must go on, and you try to be positive, and well, whatever. That's that is how it is, and mm -hmm. you just you keep going. And so I'm lucky that I'm like him because I'm just, you know. It's really shitty, but I'm also just I'm also ready to live now, right. you know. And I don't take things for, I don't take things for granted, and I don't wait to do things. I don't. It's not that I don't plan for the future, but I don't like hold out because right. I'm like I don't know, you know. And I don't have the luxury of thinking that I get to have a future, <laughs> like right. you know. And so I try to just do everything, anything that I want to do, I try to do it, and. Man, so how do you keep, you know, keep it going? You just, you know, are you, it seems like you're still doing content, you're still doing, is that maybe like your way oh, of just staying sure. busy and oh just gosh, moving? Yeah. Well, obviously after, after my mom died, I like, I kind of just froze for a while. Mm -hmm. So there's probably like six months there where I didn't really do a whole lot, except for I bought two wiener dogs. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And they're like the best, the best therapy ever, but I'm just, I'm very much a doer, and so I came to a point where I was like, all right, I'm ready. Right. And now it's, I think it's also just, you know, I don't have kids yet. I have a husband, but, you know, we we stay busy, and so I just mm -hmm. stay busy, and I just, you know, I like to start businesses and do all these things, and in a way, I'm like, am I just staying busy because <laughs> <Trying to, laughs> knowing yeah. what's happening? I think, I mean, there are probably you some know? to it. But at the same time, it can't be, like, necessarily a super bad thing. You know? right. There has to be some good that comes with it. Yeah. But I do think that that maybe that's that's a part of it. I mean, that's, like, I think anybody, you know, yeah. especially if, you, if you're if you of a doer, you, you got to keep going. I mean, what's better, you know, doing business or being home and just, right. you know. And everybody, you know, copes in their own mm -hmm. ways. And I'll probably be exhausted again after... You know, it's like it comes in it comes in waves mm -hmm. where like you're either just like slapped in the face with grief and you can't do anything, or you're just like so distracted and ignoring it that you're just like boom, boom, boom. And so I'm sure I'll crash here pretty soon because yeah, I've yeah. got a lot going on. But uh, yeah, then you just you know it's just it comes in waves and you just deal with it as it comes. And I I'm really big on friends and experiences and being an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, like you just have. 8 million things you have to do but I'm always thinking about it but when I go to coach mm -hmm. I don't think about it it's a different world <laughs> oh it's crazy yeah uh, what grade or what age do you high coach school. high school high school girls yeah oh man and how long have you been doing that you've been doing it for a little bit um yeah? two this will be the third year like, that's a tough yeah age. and especially girls yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot to offer as far as like like being their friend or guidance like I'm just like I want to teach you basketball skills because that's what right. I have to offer you know what I mean and so <laughs> like, and that's why I just I just volunteer, volunteer are you like so an like intense like, coach you know like get intense. the damn ball you intense. know yeah you know, like I don't do slacking I don't do walking I don't do mm. I just don't I'm like why are you here right right. <laughs> like, that, are you here to win right yeah but like I'm fun too you know but you got to be intense as a yeah. coach. Yeah, and if it's... everybody's working hard, then that is fun. Yeah. So how did you and uh, Amy meet? Um, so she, we were both in a wedding vendor networking group mm -hmm. a couple years ago, and um, I think I think we met in there. But one time I was like, "Hey, does anybody want to get a beer before?" <laughs> and literally, it was like crickets. And yeah. Amy was like, "I will," <laughs> and. So we kind of hit it off in that way. And then her and I just get along really well because we both just like are super excited about helping people like 
reach their potential right. and like just helping people succeed in any way that just like uh, makes yeah. us so excited and so it's been fun to see how we like feed off of each other the past few years and now it's actually become something which is cool because a lot of times you don't go into business with your right, friends I right. don't suggest it <laughs> right. but it's just been such like an organic and I don't know feels like it, sh it feels right so we went right. and went with it so and then that's where you guys came up with the connection and concierge yep and how did that idea spark like what sparked that idea yeah um well I mean the whole concept is kind of what what Amy has been doing all along for for people in Tri-Cities um and she we actually went we ended up meeting with somebody and we kind of did what we're doing now mm -hmm. but it was before we'd started and then we met after and we were like wow people really need this and people mm -hmm. you know we have something that we can offer people which is just like a um like an authentic uh experience right. you know um through trusted through a trusted uh brand brand or experience yeah. or person or whatever and you know it's hard it's hard to explain because it's never really been done but um we were essentially already doing it yeah. so it's really just become more refined and more intentional and more organized uh and just really like pin pinpointing like how we can help people i mean basically we have these platforms right mm -hmm. and it's like yeah i could just like post my dogs on there <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. and like that's fine and people love that but it's like we could also use it to help stimulate local businesses that we love that we frequent right. that we're obsessed with and you know it's just kind of the natural progression of where advertising is going that's what i think is cool that it, it doesn't come off as like um like hey please post this okay. you know what i mean <laughs> have you ever thought of doing like a brewery or something since it seems like you oh, yeah. you enjoy like beer we're into all the things <laughs> yeah that, yeah what is your favorite beer actually that was one of the questions i wanted my to ask. favorite beer is it beer or liquor and which one well what do you I, have, I go through like seasons in life like okay. sometimes i just need wine i love mm. red wine i don't like white wine so okay so what about liquor uh i like tequila and i like oh, whiskey okay. Okay. Do you have a, a favorite? Uh, I love a I love an old fashioned. Old fashioned? Yeah. Mm. That's dope. Yeah, and I love obviously the Turner at the juice box. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I love a, I love old fashioned. Old and then fashion. beer, yeah. I like IPAs. IPAs. Like really bitter. Like, really. Yeah. Damn. I like hair on the chest. Man, you could drink that. You got damn. That's what I feel. But anyway. Eight ten. I'm surprised. Yeah, I can't believe I'm not asleep right <laughs> now. <laughs> I was thinking like at eight, at eight o'clock, mid conversation, just gonna <laughs> just be done. Just turn into <laughs> a pumpkin. Yeah, just be out. <laughs> I'm like, you're still recording. <laughs> I let that thing go. Oh my you know, God. never want to miss it. <laughs> miss oh my it. gosh! Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Drive safe. Get some sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully you like the whiskey and you weren't just saying it like No, it was. What was that? I didn't even ask. That's old fashioned. Old fashioned? See, oh yeah. See you're classier than you thought. I am. <laughs> <laughs>